Welcome, everyone. My name is David Fullen. I'm the pastor of the Drakesboro United Methodist Church and the Jurgens Chapel United Methodist Church, and it's my pleasure to welcome you to this devotional for Easter Sunday. Let's pray. Gracious Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day. And because of you, every day is an Easter day, and we are Easter people. We praise you and thank you, and we rejoice with you and in the Holy Spirit. We ask you to open our eyes to the scripture, and open our minds to the truth, and open our hearts for a place where that truth can grow and flourish within us. Teach us, Heavenly Father. We pray in the strong name of Jesus, our Lord. Amen. Easter Day. Today we read Matthew 28, verses 1 through 10. Beginning with verse 1. Dawn was breaking on the first day of the week. The Sabbath was over. Mary Magdalene and the other Mary had come to look at the tomb. When suddenly there was a great earthquake, an angel of the Lord came down from heaven. He came to the stone and rolled it away and sat down on top of it. Looking at him was like looking at lightning and his clothes were white like snow. The guards trembled with terror at him and became like corpses themselves. Don't be afraid, said the angel to the women. I know you're looking for Jesus, who was crucified. He isn't here. He's been raised, as he said he would be. Come and see the place where he was lying. And then go at once and tell his disciples that he's been raised from the dead and that he's going ahead of you to Galilee. That's where you'll see him. There, I've told you. The women scurried off quickly, away from the tomb, in a mixture of terror and great delight, and went to tell his disciples. Suddenly, there was Jesus himself, He met them and said, Greetings! They came up to him and took hold of his feet, prostrating themselves in front of him. Don't be afraid, said Jesus to them. Go and tell my brothers that I'm going off to Galilee. Tell them they'll see me there. May God add his blessing to the reading of his word. Earthquakes, Angels, women running to and fro, a strange command, a highly unlikely tale. Yes, indeed, and that's the point. Nobody thought in the first century, and nobody should think now, that the point of the Easter story is that this is quite a reasonable thing to happen, that dead people really do rise if only we had the wit to see it, that it should be quite easy to believe if only you thought about it for a few minutes. No, it was always a strange and crazy wild story. What else would you expect if, after all, the ancient dream of Israel was true? If the God who made the world had finally acted to turn things around, to take all the forces of chaos, pride, greed, darkness, and death, and allow them to do their worst, exhausting themselves in the process. If Jesus of Nazareth really was, as the centurion, greatly to his own surprise, no doubt, found himself saying three days before, the Son of God? What else would you expect? A calm restatement of some philosophical truths for sage old gray beards to ponder, or events which blew the world apart and put it back in a new way. 
The unlikeliest bit of the story is the bit that really does show they weren't making it up. Women were not regarded as reliable witnesses in a court of law in those days, and everybody knew it. Even the early church, where women played an important role, formulated the first official statement of resurrection, faith, in such a way that the women were quietly removed from the story. 1 Corinthians 15, verses 3 through 9. It is a thousand percent more likely that the women were in the story at a start, at the start, and then airbrushed out, rather than that they were never there in the earliest forms of the story and then inserted in different ways by Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. How to ruin a good story for public use? Everyone would surely say, and many skeptics did, how can you believe a crazy tale on the evidence of a few hysterical women? But as Paul put it elsewhere in the same letter, God chooses what is weak in the world, what the world counts as foolishness, to put to shame the power and wisdom of the world. That is the part of what Easter is all about. That is part of what Easter is all about. God is doing a new thing, and as Jesus said earlier in the story, the first shall be last and the last first. Easter is a day to put everything upside down and inside out. Maybe we should have Easter processions with the young, the weak, and the stranger in pride of place. Letting the normal leaders sink into oblivion somewhere. Maybe we should let the children's band lead the worship and send the professional choirs into the congregation for the day. Maybe the women should lead the entire service and then, at a certain point, go and tell all the men that it's time they joined in giving the women pride of place in the story makes exactly that point. Instead of the man getting the message and then solemnly informing the women later on, the women are in on the action from the start. It is they who have to go and tell Jesus' brothers, verse 10. But the main thing is that once more they are told not to be afraid in verse 5. What is there to be afraid of if Easter has dealt with the greatest monster of all, death itself? Why should you be afraid of anything if Jesus has been raised from the dead? If the old world has cracked open and a new world has been born, And Easter always looks outwards. From the very start, the news that Jesus is risen contains a command. Go. Go first to Galilee. Go back to where it all began. Back to your roots to meet the risen Jesus there and watch him transform everything, including your oldest memories. And as you obey the command of the angel, Jesus himself may perhaps meet you in person. That's verse 9. Take hold of him. Worship him. This is his day. The day of days. Make it yours too. Our prayer for today. We praise you, Lord Jesus Christ, because you have overcome death and opened God's new creation to all believers. Amen. And may the Lord bless you and keep you until we meet again.